Hi again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Alumni Chats, a podcast featuring alumni from the Department of Broadcasting and Journalism here at Western Illinois University. My name is Buzz Hoon. I'm the host of the podcast. Today, I'm talking with 2012 graduate Steve Hodges, and welcome to the show, Steve. Uh, thanks for having me, Buzz. And in 2012, it seems like just yesterday, I'm talking right. with you in Tom Durso's office, <laughs> where I, I would easy, either, uh, I, th- I remember listening to you often on uh, The Dog, or we'd be uh, talking uh, in Tom Durso's office. You know, those were fun days. You know, I, I didn't realize I was going to have as much fun as I did. <laughs> well, um, we're going to get uh, into the WIU days, but let's give everybody a life update. Where are you? What's going on in your life? Uh, right now, I'm a I'm the IT manager at a nonprofit called Failing Family Services here in Chicago. Um, it's a bit of a stretch from broadcasting, but, you know, I still you know what I'm saying. I, get my hands dirty in the broadcast because we are we're starting a podcast here in the office. I do a lot of the photography. I do a lot of the marketing materials around here. So I'm I still uh, try to keep a handle on some things. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, you're involved with that we're going to talk about a little bit later is a podcast that is being produced for the WIU Black Alumni Council. Uh, right. And it is a terrific uh, venture. And we're going to we're going to talk about how important that is not only for the Black Alumni Council, but it's really important for all of WIU. So and we're happy that you've uh, been involved with that. Let, let's talk about the beginnings of Steve Hodges, because I, I, I like to find out sort of the early influences on a young person's life. Uh, you're from Chicago. Right. Right. And, and South so, side. Um, you know, I imagine family was really important to you in terms of an early influence. Yeah. So, uh, like, as far as um, my my broadcast career, my, one of my uncles, one of my mama's younger brothers, he was a photographer when I was young. So he used to let me play with his 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 uh, SLR camera all the time. So I, I fell in love with photography. So I was like, um, then I went to high school. I was in a marching band, went to the military, and uh, I ended up doing computers. And I, uh, after I did my time in the military, I came home. I was trying to figure out what did I want to do? Because I've been doing, I had did computers for like 10, 15 years. I was like, I want to do something different. Mm-hmm. So I ended up enrolling at community college at Kennedy King. And uh, I was slow dragging. And um, I ended up in a TV production class because I needed a three hour class <laughs> to be full time. So I was like, there was the only class that was open in the evening. Like, you know what? I just take it. It's just something to do. And next thing you know, I was like, wow, I didn't realize, you know, all the stuff that goes into TV production on the back end. And I was like, well, this is something new is outside of the computer thing. And I'm enjoying doing it. Yeah. And I've been doing this since. Huh. You know, it's it's amazing that that everything from your uncle's um, your camera to what kind of doors opened up along the way for you as you continued on through life. But, um, you know, I know that uh, you mentioned uh, high school. Uh, w- when you're going through high school, uh, you know, what kind of things did you like to be involved with? W- what kind of a young person were you in terms uh, of, you know, things that you spent time with? So in high school, I was a, I was a band major. Okay. So I spent literally all, that's all I wanted to do when I, uh, when I uh, that's all I thought I was going to do when I graduated high school. I was, I was going to be a professional musician. I played lower brass and percussion. But then my mom passed and I ended up going to the military because I wanted to do something different. Because I was like, you know, I didn't think um, college was for me at that moment because I, cause I just I, I wasn't in the right mental space. Yeah. So I went to the military and um, I, mean, I, I, I was still able to you know, just shoot pictures just on just randomly. You know, I went and bought a camera. And I bought my first video camera. It was like, you know, well, you know, video editing back then was real <laughs> horrible <laughs> and expensive to do. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just shoot pictures because I can't afford to do the video editing. Right. And as you know, the technology got better. I got my first Mac and I was like, got Final Cut Pro and was it, it's been history since then. 
Huh. And you, and you mentioned uh, you, your mom's passing and, and uh, you know, one of the things that uh, is, is so important is, you know, the, the influence uh, on an individual, you know, and I, I think that that was, um, that was probably something in your life that sent you in a direction. As you said, you joined the military, you wanted to find a different direction. Um, was it, you know, sort of a desire to, to grow into being a man or trying to get out of, uh, you know, get a, out of your neighborhood, out of the, you know, out of just into a different area of, of, of being? I mean, well, for, so for me, like my, my my mom had actually signed me up for the military maybe a, almost a year before she passed. Oh, OK. So I was like, you know, that was something that I said I was I was going to do for her, not necessarily for me, because I wanted to go to college. I want all my friends we all, was all going to band schools. So I, I, like my plan was, you know, what I'm saying when, when graduated, when graduation happened, tell my mom, hey, you know, this military thing might not work right now because I got all this money for school. So I'm going to do the school thing first. Yeah. Then go do the military thing. Then when she passed, it was like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and do this military thing. Just a to see what see what it is. See how much. See if I might enjoy it. You no, know, you never know until you try it. And so that I only did it really for my mom, you know, because that's what she wanted. So what did you, you you say you got involved with IT while you're in the military? What did you like about that? I mean, um, well. I was always a computer nerd, you know, since the, since the early 80s when we got our first Macintosh in grammar school. I was, I was probably the first person to actually operate a computer in my grammar school. And it was one of those things that was just fun. So I didn't uh, uh, I didn't think that, you know, I could make money doing that because, you know, it was only the, the, the nerdy folks that was doing it at that time. Then when I went to the military and saw all the other com- applications for computers, I was like, there's some money to be made. I think I need to learn these skills. And the crazy thing is, I didn't think I would still be doing that <laughs> today. Thirty years later, I'm still, you know, the IT guy. Yeah. So what was the um, because you, you were in? You said about fourteen, fifteen years. You know, at some point in time, you, were you considering that you were going to be in the military for a, a, an extended period? You must have thought, okay, maybe I'm supposed to be in in here for a while. No, I mean, well, I only did. I'm saying a little under four years in the military. Oh, four years. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, but my IT career was, I started that in the military in 93 and up until 2007, that's all I I had ever done. Okay. Then when I went, um, I went to enroll in a community college, I needed another class. And that's how I ended up in in TV production. So that was the only class available. So that's where you got the taste of broadcasting. And how did you decide to come to WIU? Funny story, right? So my plan was to go to Howard because I wanted to go to an HBCU when I graduated. Then, so I, I uh, but my, uh, my my daughter was like six, going on seven, and my son was a newborn. So I was I was uh, scouring the college, um, the internet, trying to find a college that had a broadcasting program since I, I had already started that. There's only two schools in the state of Illinois that had TV stations on campus, SIU and WIU. SIU was six hours. That wasn't going to happen. <laughs> six hours in the cornfield. Mm-hmm. WIU was only four hours. And there was a train that ran every single day back and forth from Chicago. So that and then Patrick Stout called me when I had applied. He called and. We talked on the phone like three hours and he sold me on Western. He did. I was like, because I, I was still up on the fence because I was like, I'm going go, to go to an HBCU, but I didn't want to go too far from my kids. It's like, well, you know, Macomb is not really that far. You know, you know how Patrick was, you know, how he is, you know, he sold me on Western. I was like, OK, I, I'll come down there and check it out. And so you come down to WIU, and what's your first memory of, of Salee Hall, and how did you get involved? So, like, my first day on campus, I, had, uh, I was in my broadcasting 100 class with Mike Murray. <laughs> I, I walk in the door, and I'm like, I see all these babies, you know, all the freshmen. Mm-hmm. And, it was, and the only other person in there that, that, that was my age was Charmaine, uh, Charmaine Johnson. Mm-hmm. I was like... I don't know how this is going to work, <laughs> but I'm already, I'm already spent my money. So I'm here. And then 
once I uh, I talked to Mike, I talked to Patrick, I talked to Tom, and uh, they made me feel, you know, like I wasn't the old guy. Like you, you just like everybody else, you know, you learning, they learning. And they made me comfortable being the old dude on the on the third floor. <laughs> I never thought of you as the old dude, but um, you know, I know that there there certainly had to been those challenges of of having to be an older person in in some of those classes because you know a young person has lots of uh, let's just say distractions available to them that an older person has decided well maybe i don't need to have time for those things anymore right so uh, when i got that i was like you know what i i'm here like my, my focus was that like, i got two years let me get this done so i can go back home mm -hmm. and try to figure out you know what all stuff i can get involved in while i'm here that's broadcast related so uh, like uh, the, the first time they, uh, when I, I got my first schedule and i had that practicum i didn't know what i was going to do for that practice but I didn't even know what kind of options. Then uh, they was like, well, you can uh, you can work the, the football game. I was like, oh, I can do that. I was like, can I work the truck? It's like, nah, everybody got to start on, <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> I, I was like, I've been there, done that. But, you know, okay, I, I, I worked my way up. No problem. And then when football season was over, they uh, let me do the dog. Like, I, I really didn't think I could do the radio. Like, you know, but I ended up doing the radio for, I'm saying not as just in my undergrad, but even when I was in grad school down at Western, I still stayed on the radio. And you eventually developed your own show, right? Right. So I, I ended up having two shows. I had a, a, a slow jam show during the week. And then I did an old school Saturday every Saturday, every Saturday morning. My people were cleaning their houses. Yeah, that's when I remember. <laughs> So, so you're, you're kind of uh, exploring different things there. And um, you mentioned a few uh, people, other students, uh, other than Charmaine that you enjoyed hanging out with. I mean, I think uh, all the, all the folks on the third floor, um, I mean, we, uh, after a while, you know, like, especially like, uh, like in our senior year, we all became family. Yeah. Cause well, we worked on so many projects together from you know, doing the news show, doing the sporting events, and uh, whatever else we had going on on the third floor, everybody, you know what I'm saying, seemed to get along. And we all took turns, you know what I'm saying, and leadership, you know, there was never one person trying to control everything. Everybody was allowed to, you know what I'm saying, to move around so you can get a taste of everything that was going on. That way you can decide what you want to do at the end of the day. So I, I'm thankful for the opportunity to, to even do that because a lot of places don't even allow, you know what I'm saying, the students to have that much leeway. Yeah. It's you, it's you, this is what you're going to do and you just do it. But you know, on the third floor of the league, I'm saying y'all gave us the opportunity to do, to pick and choose whatever we wanted to do and roll with it. Yeah. Well, I think people looked to, to you and, and, and maybe it was because of your age, but I think it was because of your knowledge as well, that you had sort of a natural leadership quality to you that people would seek you out. Um, and, and, and I'm sure you were asked numerous times to help other people along. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, it was one of those things. I was shocked, you know, that people would even ask me. <laughs> I was like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm not the, the greatest student, but you know, I, I do have a, a, a better understanding of some things and it's my, uh, it's my job to pass knowledge. Mm -hmm. So, you know, especially as the older student, you know, I don't want to hoard all the knowledge. Yeah. Cause, cause you, you, you might be around here longer than me. Uh, if I can help you along, you know what I'm saying? Then we all get along. Yeah. Because in, in broadcast, you know, broadcasting is a team sport. So, you know, there's there's no I. It's, if if you can't do it, it's my job to help you get there. That's right. Because if, if you don't, if, if you don't succeed, the team fails. And that's one of those things that I learned at Western. Like, this is always a team effort. Absolutely. Everything we did with this, with the sports productions, it took more, you know, the most visible people were the announcers, but there were so many people behind the scenes that it took to put on a, a production. Same thing with news. Um, and even with the radio, all that, you know, you had to have a, a successful team uh, behind the scenes, helping people individually succeed. Uh, that's one of those things I learned at Western that, you know, that there's no I. Is is all about the team. Even if you're not seen, 
long, when you do your part, everybody knows that your part has been done. So um, before we leave WIU, what other kind of uh, Macomb memories do you have? Because I, I always like to see, you know, are there things you like doing out in the in the community, ways, other things that you're getting involved in besides Soli Hall? I mean, well, I, uh, I was actively involved in the uh, Black Student Association. And um, one, of, one of my senior projects, I got to interview uh, Belinda Carr. Oh. And a lot, of, a lot of folks outside of the, the Black students really didn't know Belinda Carr. They didn't know the, her influence on the campus, mm -hmm. not just with the, with the Black students, but with everybody. So I got to uh, interview her uh, when I was doing a, a piece on the uh, multicultural center. And I didn't realize, you know, how much history was in that building, even though the building was brand new. All the stuff that, that went on to get that building even put up. Because um, uh, those uh, those three centers, uh, the Women's Center, Casa Latina and the Gwendolyn Breast Cultural Center were, were out of home for a long time before uh, the multicultural center went up. And just to hear the stories about uh, all the stuff that went on, all the programming that they did that I didn't even know about until I was a student down there because nobody ever talked about it. Yeah, that's interesting. And that's going to lead us eventually into your your podcast um, that you're helping with, because, you know, there there's so many important people and their contributions. You, you mentioned uh, Mrs. Card, but also Dr. Rutledge, um, Dr. Bracey. You know, uh, there was there are people that were helping uh, a lot of the the black students along the way and and um, and uh, their stories, as you said, you know, making sure people understood uh, the legacy uh, of, of people that have been there before, you know, somebody that arrives on campus today uh, is really important. All right. And that's one of, that's one of the things that we uh, that's one of the reasons why we started the Black Alumni Podcast, because we wanted students, not just, you know, students of color, but students, period, to understand, you know, our experiences and how, you know, what I'm saying those experiences helped shape who we became. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, what I'm saying pe when people see those things, you know, it'll bring about, you know, what I'm saying a little bit of change because the change is always a good thing. And, you know, just to give people an insight, you know, that we exist down here and we we, we, we went through the same struggles. Yeah. So when you graduated in uh, 2012, um, you did an internship in Chicago at um, WYCC, right? Yeah, that's uh, Channel 20. That's the City of Chicago's, City Colleges of Chicago TV station okay. where I had uh, started my career. So I went back there and uh, I was um, I was doing PA work and, you know, uh, uh, doing uh, TD and, uh, and all the other stuff in, in the control room. And then something was sparked in me. It was like, you know what? I don't know if this is going to work because it's not moving fast enough. But and then I got a call from, uh, from Belinda Carr uh, about, uh, about grad school. But I had never thought about going to grad school. <laughs> and then uh, I got a call. To, uh, uh, I got a, a letter from the IDT department. I was like, man, OK. I, I was like, well, now I got to stop my TV career because I'm going back to school. To uh, do because uh, I wanted to do instructional videos, so I was like, "Well, I can take my broadcasting degree and apply that to instructional design." Because uh, uh, YouTube was, you know, saying still in its infancy at that time. So I was like, "Well, I want to you know, put all these instructional videos on YouTube because I because a lot of the videos that I used to see were horrible at that time." Mm -hmm. so I was like, "You know, I can do way better videos <laughs> than that." Well, you, you know, that's one of the things I try to tell people that's so important. Almost any organization, any business, anything that is in communication now, it's really important that people understand how to visually tell the story with, you know, with a with a high quality video. And um, those you know, they some people naturally fall into that, but other people need to learn about telling that story in a in a that visual way. Um, and our graduates have those skills and, and uh like uh i was uh watching one of my videos from uh from my senior project um and i was uh telling somebody I was like you know as much as i didn't like sam edsel <laughs> some days <laughs> but sam was he, he was real hard on us mm -hmm. I, and i really appreciate the fact that he was hard on us 
because it, it allowed my videos to become a whole lot better. Mm-hmm. It, uh, my, uh, he, uh, he fine-tuned my editing techniques because, I mean, I thought I was a great editor. You know, I was already Final, Final Cut 6 and 7 certified, so I like, you know, when Apple say I'm good, I should be okay, right? <laughs> He's like, nah, there's some other things that you can do mm-hmm. that makes your video stand out just a little bit more than the next man. I was like, all right, Sam, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm going to do what I do. This is what I know. He's like, now give me two weeks and, I, and, and I'll let you see the difference. And I gave him the two weeks and he, uh, he showed me a lot of techniques. I was like, wow. If other kids will listen to Sam, you know, <laughs> And get past, you know, the some of the, you know, the, the other stuff, they'll become greater, better editors because Sam had a lot, a lot of knowledge that, you know, we took for granted. Now, everything that you you're doing with the nonprofit and, and you also work independently, right? Right. So I so as you as you see, I got my little shirt on today. I so uh, this one of my, my one of my my side hustles, as I like to call them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, photos by Steve O'Dizzle, where we do um, videography and still photography. So, uh, so it's it's prom and graduation season, so business is ramping up as usual. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still DJ at least once or twice a month on the weekends. I'm uh, working on we uh, working on doing the internet radio thing again. Uh, with me and another graduate, uh, Latasha Atkins, she graduated in 2014. Okay. So we are uh, we working on uh, putting together uh, radio shows that reminiscent of our dog days and just um, uh, pre-recording them and just broadcasting them. Nice. So all those th- all those things that, you know, and it's those transferable skills, as we mentioned, these things that uh, you've learned independently, but you also learned at WIU and how you're putting them into place and um you know, that trend that that then leads to the question of how did the podcast idea come along for uh, the WIU Black Alumni Council? And I think it's called Life of a Leatherneck. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Life of a Leatherneck. Right. So uh, it was we was just having a discussion at one of the meetings one day and uh, I was watching a podcast, you know, like, like we, we do a lot of Zoom. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, you, as you looking at the Zoom, I got my phone over in the corner. If I'm watching the video, I was like, so I, I asked um, somebody in, in uh, the council, I was like, hey, like, what do you think about us doing a podcast? It's like, well, who's going to do it? I was like, well, we can do it. We don't need to hire nobody to do that. We can do that ourselves. I was like, you know, I, I direct, I edit. We just need to find the folks to interview. Right. It's like, well, let's do it. I was like, we can do it tomorrow. <laughs> Why wait? Why wait? Exactly. We can just do it. I was like, we do it this weekend. So we called up uh, our president, Daryl Holloman, and called, like, hey, we're going we, we to shoot this podcast on Sunday. Are you available? She's like, yeah. Like, and next thing you know, we're on episode number three now. And, and that's only been maybe about a month and a half in existence. And the, the guests, first of all, and they're just wonderful guests, all very positive, um, also um, terrific. And and uh, your host, I, you know, how did you select your host? And I mean, well, um, Byron, uh, Byron volunteered because <laughs> uh, Byron works on the, uh, the the WIU Alumni Council as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, so he's always been the MC at our, a, lot, a lot of our functions. Yeah. So a good job. So he said, you know, I host. I was like, well. I don't want to host. I want to be in the background. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not the in front of the camera dude. I'm the background guy. But so uh, Byron volunteered the host, and we just been you know picking up that's uh, find a, a alumni that we think have awesome stories to tell. Yes. So how do you you, you edit? You also um, direct the do you, so you you when you see cameras uh, or the video switch back and forth, you, that's you. Yeah, that's all me. That's all and me on the background. Down music. You put in intro and outro graphics. Yeah, I do. I, I, all all the behind the scenes stuff is is all Steve Hodges. Yeah, that's terrific. So, do you have a plan to say, you know, I, I, we're going to try to do it every week, or we're going to try to? So right to- now we 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 were, we were we're we're looking at once a month, mm-hmm. but that 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 frequency may change depending on how popular the podcast get and uh, and 
the frequency of the guests that we can that we can acquire. Right. So like my plan was to you know at least twice a month, but you know that that twice a month may turn into every week depending on how exciting people how excited people get about it. So we we it's, it's not like we 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 um we starving for for talent. We got plenty of talent. Yeah. Oh, that's that, and that's the great thing about that is you have all these wonderful stories to tell, and again, it connects back. The, you know, the ones that I've watched, each person talks about again people that are on the WIU campus that impacted them in a in a positive manner, and then it starts to build this legacy, and then it leaves behind traces of of the the mentorship that was going on, and it reminds people when you're here, you need to give back as well. You're, you know, at some point in time, a young person decides, okay, I'm a freshman or I'm new and I'm, I'm, I'm taken. But at some point in time, you start to say, I need to t- start taking care of other people. By the time you you're a senior, you know, all that gets turned around. Right. Right. And that's the one, that's, that's one, one of the things that I loved about our broadcasting department. Like I came in as a junior, right. So I was almost instantly a mentor to the freshman and I just walked in the door. <laughs> but you know, I had a a bevy of experience already yeah. before I got there. So I didn't have a problem giving back. Because I know I don't want to do it alone. Right. So if if I help other people get to where I am, then I'm never alone in that process. Well, I think that that podcast is now gaining traction. Um I I, I hope that more people uh continue to tune into that because uh, those kind of um, stories are really important to to the WIU story. It all fits together, just like our little podcast fits in, you know, has its little place. You know, this uh, Black Alumni Council podcast is an important part of the WIU story, and, and it needs to be told. Yeah, definitely, because I, I always tell folks, you know, WIU is a big place with a lot of stories and and. A lot of times once we graduate, nobody gets to hear them unless we come back to Western, <laughs> which is, you know, once or twice a year. You know, we want to we want people to be able to hear these stories anytime they want to. That's right. And I think that's the last time that you and I talked was during homecoming. I think you were <laughs> back for homecoming. Right. Right. And, and I, I really appreciate coming down to homecoming and the broadcasting department always takes care of me when I come down. there. So. Steve, you know, now that you've been out for a few years and, and, and again, I think that at some point in time, and I don't know if you ever think about this, but I see you, I, I see you as a teacher in some way, some, some future way. I see Steve Hodge is giving back as a teacher, but anyway, so let's just say, what kind of advice do you have as, for a young person uh, that's considering, you know, uh, this is a, a major so what I would tell young folks uh, as a broadcasting major, find your niche. Mm. There are plenty of them out there. There are, there are plenty of avenues in broadcasting. You don't have to take the 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 what I would call you know the big road. You don't have to take the the. You, there are so many things you can do in broadcasting. You find something that fits you, and you explore that, and you work that. Yeah. Like like when I got to Western, I, I my goal was to you know what I'm saying do do sports. I'm saying, I mean, because I, I came as a sports broadcasting major, like that's what I wanted to do. Then I realized that you know, that's a lot of work, and everybody else is trying to do the exact same thing. So I need to find something that I can do, that you know, I'm saying I can always do. So I started doing the video editing. It's like people are always shooting videos, yeah. but nobody edits them great. So I, if I become the greatest video editor that I, I can become, I'm gonna always work. There's always going to be work for me. Yeah, that's right. That's right. If somebody will always seek you out. Somebody will always need to find you. Exactly. And, and that's, uh, that was my goal, to, to make sure that I'm always needed. Well, it's been great catching up with you, Steve. And I, and I hope that uh, we can continue to be storytellers of, uh, of, of WIU alums. Um, because uh, I think that's uh, it's a worthwhile effort. It truly is. It truly is. And, and I really appreciate uh, the broadcasting department for even allowing me to do what I did down there. Because a lot of stuff, you know, that I did down there that I probably wouldn't have been able to do anywhere else. 
Well, I, again, you, you were a very uh, important part of uh, our student population when you were there. It was a short time, um, but I, I do, you know, I, I'm very thankful for having you as part of our group and, uh, and, and it always enjoyed those conversations with Tom Durso. Yeah, my, my goal, like I was telling uh, my daughter, she is at, she's at SIUE right now. I told us, like, you know, like when we go to visit uh, Western, you know, my goal is to one day walk on the third floor and see my picture on the wall of fame with everybody else. Okay. Like, you yeah, know, that's yeah. when I know I, I've made it. <laughs> when, I, when, when I show up on that wall and people realize that, hey, Steve was here. <laughs> that's a worthwhile goal. <laughs> Well, it's great catching up with you, Steve, and, and thanks again for being on the podcast. All right, no problem. And thanks to all of our weekly viewers out there. If you're interested in being a guest on the podcast or want to recommend someone, just email me. We want to hear from you, and we hope that you continue to watch and listen to the podcast and really appreciate everyone's support. So until next week, stay safe, take care, and God bless. <laughs>